Robert Egger, CEO of Disney, was paid $47 million in 2021. Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, was paid close to $100 million in 2022. Sundry Picture, CEO of Google, was paid an unbelievable amount of $226 million US dollar in 2022. Have you ever wondered why they get paid so much? Are they getting overpaid? What makes them stand out? The key is that they have the best decision-making skill. And decision-making is the single most important skill in the modern world. Let's see why. In today's world, we face too much choices. We can choose dishes from any countries for dinner. With a few clicks, we can choose what videos to watch. Picking a stock is easier than ever. Our life becomes a series of decision-making, some more important than others. You combine this massive decision chaos with the easy access of leverage, things get tough. Put into human words, good decision leads to massively favorable outcome, while bad decision can lead to a catastrophe. For example, it is much easier now to get a home loan from the bank. That's a leverage of four to five fold. Now you imagine a person saved up 10 years of earning and bought a house in bad location. House price keep crashing, and one day the person lose all of the wealth and end up with only debt. That's how a simple decision can be actually lethal. Average is the catalyst. Now let's look back the CEO case. Let's compare Tim Cook with another candidate. The chance of that candidate makes a correct decision is 50%. And Tim Cook has just a slight edge on decision making, leading to 1% higher chance of making the right call. Now let's do the math. Apple's market capitalization is 2.84 trillion, and 1% of that is equal to 28 billion and 400 million. So Tim, despite only having 1% better odds, can theoretically save Apple, can theoretically save Apple 28 billion and 400 million dollars. Now, if you are one of the shareholders at Apple, are you willing to pay Tim 99.2 million dollar to save yourself 28 billion and 400 million dollar hell yes mass works out another reason why decision making is so important is because decision making a chain reaction say you made a decision to marry a partner and it turns out that your partner is one of a kind he or she not only share your abundance in family issues but also guide you for your career choice this may lead you to having more energy to devote into your passion and then leads to a second career the story goes on another good example is warren buffett the most successful investor at all time net worth of 120.6 billion he made a decision to invest 1 billion in coca-cola back in 1988 at a price that most people think was too high however history proved them wrong after 35 years these shares are now worth 22 billion till today and in the foreseeable future that one good decision will continue making one of the richest people in the world even richer. Now that we've talked about why decision making is such an important skill, let's talk about how to make decision when time comes. First of all, you need information. You need tons of information. The more, the better. For example, you want to buy a property. You need to know from macro scale whether the market is bear or bull. Is there any policy coming up? What areas are booming? What's the demography look like? Is there going to be a new shopping center built in the future? Two macro scale, such as how large the land size is. What's the price per square meters? How many bedrooms, bathroom, garage, car parks? Is there any school, hospital, metro station nearby? Even to the tiny detail, how many trees are in the backyard? Because you may want to cut them down and build another unit to resell. So much information you need to gather for many, many property before you can make a call. Now say the property price either go up or down and you want to know the odds. Also, you want to know if the price goes up, how high can it go? If the price goes down, how low can it hit? I remember three years ago, 
I bought a house using the money I earned from stock. I was feeling like a king since I just graduated from college and sevenfolded my investment in Tesla. So without diving into the property market much, I listened to one of my friends who said that there is going to be a shopping center built soon in this area and my property is at the center location of the suburb. So I foolishly bought it. It was only until not long ago that I found out that this suburb consistently records the highest crime rate in the city. At the end, I sold it with a loss. Anyway, to make a good decision, you need all the information you can get, more information than anyone else that will give you an edge. Then you need a framework. One common approach is think about expected value. Expected value is the average value of an outcome when an event occurs many, many times. For example, toss a fair coin. Head, you win a dollar. Tail, you lose a dollar. The expected value is, you guessed it, zero. In human words, expected value gives you a combined view of risk and rewards. Imagine buying a stock. You have two possible outcomes, profit or loss. Now, the chance of making a profit is very low, say 10%. Naturally, the chance of making a loss is 90%. However, if the stock goes up, you win $100. And when it goes down, you only lose $2. Let's calculate the expected value. Positive outcome $100 times by the probability 10%, we get $10. Take the negative outcome, which is minus $2 times by the probability 90%, we get minus $1.8. Sum them up the expected value is positive $8.2. That is saying if you continue buying this kind of stock over long run, you are expected to gain $8.2 every time you buy. In reality, you may lose many, many times, actually 90% of the time, but once in a while, you make a big gain. And overall, that's good enough. Mass, again, works out. Well, using expected value can help you make rational decision, but to ignore the fact that $8.2 is not going to change my life. And if I'm on a losing strike for too long, I might end up bankrupt before I can see a win. So let me introduce another approach, less known to others. It's called utility. This is a concept in economy introduced by Swiss mathematician Daniel Bernoulli, back in 18th centuries. In human words, utility measures the benefit of owning something to an individual. For example, if you are starving, eating a burger makes you very satisfying. Eating a second one becomes less so. When you move on to the fifth one, it becomes a suffering. Even though each burger costs $10, the benefit you get is quite different. So when you are making decision, you can also think of utility. For example, I myself purchase a lottery ticket each week for $10. Even though lottery is a negative expected value gain, my utility is actually very positive because losing $10 a week will not impact my life at all. But if I hit the jackpot, my entire life is going to change. If you want to catch pies falling from the sky, then at least you should walk underneath a pizza shop. Today, we covered why decision making is such an important skill and how to make a good decision, which is gathering information and having a framework. We also covered two common framework that many rational people are using, but these are just tip of the iceberg. In the next video, I'm going to review how to consistently making good decisions. You definitely don't want to miss out. Click the subscribe button down below and I'll see you in my next video.